And joining me now from London is Natasha Hausdorff, a barrister and international law expert and the director at UK Lawyers for Israel. Thank you so much for taking the time this evening to be with me. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Now, at the end of two days of hearings in The Hague, there's no knowing how the International Court of Justice will rule. But there can be no doubt that the ostensible legal basis for the allegation that Israel is carrying out deliberate genocide in Gaza is unfounded and that any fair-minded court would dismiss it. The big question, Natasha, is, is this a fair court? Well, that's absolutely right, and I'm afraid only time will tell. Uh, I don't think, in light of the submissions that we heard today, Israel could have possibly done more. Um, I think it's important to bear in mind how hard it is to prove a negative. Uh, but uh, not only did Israel put forward very forcefully uh, an evidential basis to demonstrate the care that it is taking um, in an unparalleled fashion towards uh, Palestinian civilians, both in terms of the uh, framework of the law of armed conflict and also over and above the provisions of international humanitarian law. Um, but we've also seen clear argumentation uh, and warnings to the court on what the consequences would be if the law was thrown out of the window in the way that South Africa uh, is um, submitting for. Uh, and in the clip that you just played, uh, those warnings um, were made very forcefully. Now, it was Israel's day to take the podium, but South Africa wasn't quiet. Just listen to the comments by the South African legal team after the hearing today. The state of Israel today has failed to disprove South Africa's compelling case that was presented before the court yesterday. We stand by the facts, the law, and the, all the evidence we have submitted yesterday. And we believe and stand very confident that those facts, the law, still are in violation of the Genocide Convention. So after listening to that and also watching the last two days of proceedings, do you agree that Israel served its interests in participating in the proceedings or should it rather have boycotted them? Again, I think that's going to ultimately depend on, on the decision that the court comes to. But it's clear that you know Israel is a country of law and order and that as a result, uh, ministers, decision makers uh, and civil servants are, operate often on the basis uh, that international legal institutions, the International Court of Justice included, are similarly uh, respectful uh, of the law. And I'm afraid only time will tell how how far along the International Court of Justice is um, down the political agenda that South Africa is, is seeking to pursue. I mean, what we've just heard in that clip um, is tone deaf to the content of the submissions that were made today, not least those uh, which were perhaps less easy to predict in relation to South Africa misleading the court uh, as to the correspondence uh, that had existed between South Africa and the State of Israel in advance of this application being made. One of the shocking revelations uh, was that it seems to have jumped the gun uh, and hasn't allowed Israel to properly respond in the normal uh, fashion uh, before bringing a case on the basis of there being an actual dispute. And that goes to the question of jurisdiction that the court has to even hear the case, uh, let alone order the provisional measures that South Africa is seeking. Uh, and so there is ample scope for the court, both uh, in terms of you know the politicisation of this case, but also in terms of the letter of the law on jurisdiction, uh, as well as uh, the merits of this, which it has to consider to an extent in the context of this preliminary hearing, uh, for this case to be thrown out. So many world bodies nowadays lack not only purpose, but legitimacy. The world is far away from 1945 and World War II. However, the rulings are still damaging to many nations. Would this now be the case for Israel? And the reason I ask that as well is outside of the proceedings or what they tend to rule, Germany now says that it's going to intervene in the ICJ case on Israel's behalf, blasting the genocide claims. So does that mean that the court might move ahead and actually convict Israel, how damning would that be? 
I would just need to be clear that, that this isn't a conviction of sorts, as one might see in a criminal court, for example, the International Criminal Court, uh, which has its own agenda uh, against individual Israelis and is continuing its investigation despite the absence of jurisdiction in that case. Uh, but here, the fact that Germany has now come out and has joined the United States and the United Kingdom, all respected, law-abiding countries, upholders of the rule of law, um, that is significant because it does mean that if the court decides this case based on a political agenda and lawfare rather than on the law and the facts as they've had presented to them today, then a decision against Israel uh, really wouldn't have very much credibility. Uh, and that is critical. We've seen many international legal institutions, the International Criminal Court included, and also the UN Human Rights Council uh, and other UN bodies, uh, pursuing blatant political agendas against Israel, devoid of any basis in law or fact. Uh, and that continuing process, if it infects the International Court of Justice also, will undoubtedly undermine its credibility and any ruling that it may issue against Israel in this case. Absolutely. It almost appears that it would have some kind of knock-on effect. Natasha Hausdorff, a barrister and international law expert and the director at UK Lawyers for Israel, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.